Hello, hello. Welcome to Stampin' All Day with Bev. A pop-up for you today. I've got my paper pumpkin. It came yesterday? Maybe the day before, I can't remember. But I opened it up yesterday and started playing with it. And I knew you guys were gonna wanna see some alternatives, which I promise every month that I do. So today is a pop-up here at noon. It is noon now. I selected noon because, again, we have contractors here and they usually go to lunch at noon. But they're still pounding away. So they're just dedicated. <laughs> I'm hoping they go to lunch um, while I'm on here, but we'll see. So this month's... Um, paper pumpkin. It's called September's 2023 with love and gratitude is stunning. I love the box. It's, it will be pretty to put something over the, my paper or paper pumpkin right here and give it as a gift without having to wrap anything. If you do not have paper pumpkin yet and you want it, just go to paperpumpkin.com and you can subscribe and cancel any time. You can put it on hold any time. You can do whatever you want, as long as you do it before the 10th of the month. So if you want next month's paper pumpkin, you can sign up right now and you will get um, October's, as long as you do it before the 10th. All right, so let's, let me take one more drink of my coffee. Hey, Angie. And let's go on because I have <clears throat> quite a bit to tell you, I think. All right, one of the reasons I love paper pumpkins so much is because, well, let's give you a good for instance right now. Thanksgiving is coming up, and in this paper pumpkin, there's eight cards and eight bags. So I can send eight of my family members, my cousins, all a beautiful Thanksgiving card, I can give my neighbors a little gift bag with some treats in it for Thanksgiving. Um, and it's just very, very useful to have that all in one little box. Now I did add a couple of things to my projects that are not in the box. One of them is a distress tile folder. I uh, used it because it's new to me and it's in the new mini. That is the item code number and I could not wait to use it. Flat out honest, could not wait to use it, so I'm using it. Then I thought that this paper was really pretty for fall. Um, so I said, well, maybe I'll use a little bit of that. It's called Ink Botanical 6x6, and there is their code right there. Okay. The ink spot color that comes in the kit is Lost Lagoon, but you get a spot. I'm going to use my full pad. I always do that. I save my spots, and when somebody comes to my open houses that doesn't have a lot of color, I give them some spots. Hi, Andrea. So let me tell you, show you what's uh, in this kit. I already told you there's eight cards and eight envelopes, right? Okay. The stamp set. I am completely head over heels over this stamp set. I didn't get any, well, I just got one false stamp set. Hi, Mary Jo. So I was super happy with this pumpkin. And it has a stem. I have the stem already on a, on a block. I have some of these stamps on a block already. A thanks, a for you, um, with, with love and gratitude, like the kit is called, grateful for you and thank you. So this is wonderful for thank you cards. And I love the boldness of the bigger images. I write on there the month that they are, so when I put them all together, all my paper pumpkin stamp sets are in one spot. I know if anybody asks me what month that was, I can tell them. So that's why I write 9-20-23 on, wrote 9-20-23 on this one. All right, so that's the stamp set. Now, why do I like having all these paper pumpkin stamp sets? Let me give you a good example. I told you that the other day my friends came over and I showed them how to make this sunflower on a spring, but I wanted a tag on it and I wanted the tag to say, you are my sunshine. 
Well, I don't have a stamp that says that. And I sure as heck didn't want to ruin this tag by writing it. My handwriting is not good enough to do that. So I went through my paper pumpkin stamps. I have a file, um, an electronic file that uh, one of you graciously sent me. And I looked in there and I saw two stamp sets. One that had a stamp that said, you are my and then another stamp set that said sunshine. So I combined those together, but if I didn't have paper pumpkin, I would not have been able to stamp that. I would have had to print it out or something, you know, ask somebody that does really pretty writing to do that for me. So I was really happy to find those there. While we're here, I'm just gonna give you my host code for the month real quick and my website in case you wanna place an order with me. Remember that um, the Clarence Rack has been refreshed. Okay, I kind of feel like I'm whispering. It's probably because I just covered up mom. She's taking a nap and she gets chilly and I she was laying on all her blankets. So I grabbed a thin one and laid it on her. And so I think I'm in the whisper mode still. Here are some of the punch outs um, that come in this month's kit. Here are the adhesives, tear and tape and mini dimensionals. Look at these pumpkins. A look at the, um, I'm going to call them decals, punch outs. They're just, they're just awesome. I love this gold one. Now this gold one is not complete because I, I tear things apart. So I took off two of the branches of this already. So there's that. And then it had said that there was bags, right? Eight bags. Look at the gold trim at the tip of these bags. Look at the pattern. It's like a heathered tweed almost. It's just gorgeous. And there's eight of them. And I took some crumb cake cardstock and ran it through the folder I just mentioned, the distressed tile. By the way, if you place an order with me this month, if you already have, you're already in the drawing, but at the on the first, I will pick a winner randomly, and you will win this 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 folder here. And this is what it looks like when you run it through cardstock. So I ran a piece that is. Let me. Oh, I might need my ruler, so I'll just put this paper away here. That is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And it fits right on the front of this bag, like that. Now, before we get into making this bag, you have your tear and tape, which I'm not opening because I already have some open um, that came in another paper pumpkin kit a few months ago. So I'm using that one up first. Um, so I'll put these away in my little package. But when you get your um, bags, they're all scored and everything. And some people I hear have a hard time folding their 3D items. So I'm, going, I'm here to tell you, all you have to do is push in on the sides, lay it flat like this, take your bone folder and burnish, and you will have an easy time putting this bag together. Then I take the two center flaps and just Flap them in, push them in like that, sorry. And then I put one of the tabs down and the other tab already has the tear and tape that comes in the kit. Burnish that, peel it off. And now you wanna make sure your bag is straight, not wonky, and you can just adhere it like that. I'm taking the wider part of my bone folder and just pushing on the inside of the bag to make sure that that tape holds well. And then we have this adorable, well no it's not adorable, it's beautiful bag. That easy. Very, very simple. All right, now at this point, you can take some wide ribbon and bring it underneath and to the top and tie a bow to keep it closed. Or you can do what I did. And I kept, I'm keeping it closed using the, the punch outs 
from the kit. So look at that. Is that not an elegant, elegant gift bag for a gift, for treats, for whatever you want it to be for? And so let me grab the tag. We're gonna start there. And I'm gonna take the stamp. That one says love and gratitude. This one says thank you. And this one says grateful for you. I have a feeling that these are gonna to go to my neighbors who I am very grateful for. So I'm going to, and that's another good thing. They will be done now. I just have to put them up on display until closer to Thanksgiving. And then my little treat bags are ready for my neighbors. So there we go, grateful for you. And this one I'm gonna change up just a little bit by putting this very pretty embossed cardstock over the front. Now you do not need to do that at all. It's gorgeous the way it is. I just like to give you ideas and selfishly I wanted to use this folder, so I did. And I'm just gonna lay this on here, trying to get it even all the way, frame it even all the way around, all four sides. Hello, Joy. Okay, so there we go. Now, one thing did bug me about this kit. The pumpkins, they're beautiful but they're flat and it kind of bothered me that they were just flat. Pumpkins are round in real life, of course. I know this is stamping, but I wanted some poof to them. So I'm gonna show you what I did to build my cluster. You will need your piercing mat. This is a piercing mat. There is the piercing mat's code. And you will need your stylus tool from your Simply Score tool. And I, for this part, I take the fine point of this tool and I just press, not real hard, um, in all the little separations of the pumpkin here, the seams from the front side. Then when I turn it over, you can see that you can see those lines on the back. So I take the wide ball now and I just go in a circular motion. You can go straight up and down as well. I've just got the habit of going in a circular motion. And this breaks down the fibers in the cardstock and it helps the pumpkin become more dimensional. So after I did that, I was very happy with the image of these pumpkins. So now you can see there's a bend and almost a quilt look because of the separation. It's so defined there, okay? can help it by bending just a tad. All right, so now we're gonna build a cluster. We take the leaves that come in the kit and we're just going to use the cluster we're building as the closure for the bag. Oh my goodness, look at, look how pretty this is with the um, cardstock on top. Okay, so we're gonna take this gold one, which I started to tear apart. I'm gonna get another one because I tore that one apart. My box. And there's a whole bunch of sheets of this. So there's a, there's a lot of them. There's some small ones and some large ones. I used the large ones for this. Okay, so let's start our cluster. 
To start my cluster, I am going to put the gold sprigs to the leaves and I'm simply going to use a dimensional because I do want these to be, um, to be lifted a little bit. Now I'm gonna pay attention to where I want to place this. Now remember, it doesn't have to stay all on the bag because it's not a card, so it's okay if it's going off a little bit. We don't want this tip too far down into our cluster so it's hard to open, but we want it far enough to where it will hold it closed. All right, so now I'm gonna take my quilted, as I call it, pumpkin, and I'm gonna put that together with the leaves with another dimensional. And then I'm gonna get my little tag. I might as well use my little tags to hold this down. Okay, look what I did. I stamped way over here instead of close to the edge. So, on this one, instead of stamping again, I'm just gonna say grateful. Easy fix. But now you know, if you wanna see the whole thing, you gotta start way on the end there. Okay. So let's add a few more. I want this to be strong since it's a closure for this, for this bag box. And I started with the, the simple project Everything except for this is in the kit. But if you make this one, this version, everything is in the kit. Okay, so we're gonna hold it closed. Then we're gonna place it close. And there it stays closed for us. Aren't they pretty? So that's that easy. Okay. It's a photopolymer stamp set, so I'm gonna just keep my paper piercing mat right here. And we're gonna go to the next card. Let's see if I laid out everything. I got so excited when I was making things. I don't know if everything's in the pack. Here's an envelope, and here's my first card. Now, I don't think I mentioned when I, when I first came on that there's eight note cards and eight boxes. So these are the note cards. Well, I want full cards, and so I looked at that, and I said to myself, these are the softest, most beautiful colors ever. What would look good with that? And I came up with Pretty Peacock. So this base is Pretty Peacock. Here is the note card, and it's gorgeous. Again, it's weathered, um, textured, just by looking at it. It looks like a picture. They probably took photos of something and turned it into paper like they do. Love that. But let's dissect this card. So you see that I have another layer piece here with the same folder, right? So let me get, let's see what I have here. Let me get a piece, I didn't cut it. Yeah, I told you I wasn't completely organized. I got so excited making these cards that I go a little too quick, even for myself. And I'm so I cut a four by five and a quarter piece and I need my folder. So I'm gonna use the black line to get everything straight and then I'm gonna turn around behind me and use this in my cut and boss machine. There they go, they're going to lunch, so we have some quiet now. So I'll try to do this while they're, the rest of this while they're gone. So look at this. 
and it's distressed, so you can see the distressing in it. Love it. Okay. So now we have a four and a quarter by 11 piece of Pretty Peacock for this card base. And we're gonna fold that over corner to corner. And use our bone folder to get that down good. And then I can layer this. See how pretty that becomes? So let's get that down. Now check out the card as I'm working. You're gonna see a floral pattern is the next thing from the back. So the base, the layer, and then a floral pattern. So the floral pattern is also in the kit. Here's my tag, here's my envelope, and here's where the floral, oh, one went to lunch and one stayed. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Okay, so one's gonna work and one's going to lunch, and then when the other one comes back, the other one will go to lunch. You know, that's actually very organized and efficient, but I didn't expect it. So look at this, the inside of the envelope, the floral pattern of that. So I thought that was so pretty that I wanted to use that. So let's take our paper trimmer and I'm gonna find the score line and we're going to let's see it's probably yeah, it's easier to, for me to see it on the back side. And I'm gonna cut that down. Okay, then I'm gonna cut off the flaps because they're white and I want the pattern. And the square that I'm making just happens to fit perfect behind my focal point. So there you go. Look at that. Look how pretty, and yes, I love the roughness, although that tells me I need a new blade. But we're good with this rustic card. So look how pretty that's building. Oh my word. In fact, I was talking on the phone with one of my friends while I was I had her on speaker and I was creating as we were talking. So yes, I just made this card this morning. And yes, God came through again. In fact, it came through in a big way big way well okay lord i'm bragging on you so you gotta hang with me here because you can't leave me alone i can't do it on my own um my usual prayer and this was the first thing that came up the bag was pretty easy so then i said after that i need your help and um boy did he come through i can't wait to show you all right so now this tag is going to go in on top and it doesn't matter what side, they're both the same. So that made it easy. Okay. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Charda, Char, Chardra. Okay. And then another one of the punch outs, the pumpkin, a pumpkin. And I need another pumpkin. From the kit. Now, can you tell the difference on camera? I don't know if you can or cannot, but I am addicted to doing this. I have done it for years and years and years. Anybody that's been to my classes and open houses and that, they know that this is a technique I use often when I want dimension. So I'm just gonna continue to use it. It just adds so much and it's not hard. It just takes a minute. 
for the difference, it's really worth it to me. I call this just scribbling with my stylus on the back side. And that just breaks the fibers like I explained on the first card and gives dimension. See the poof? Okay, turn this one over and do the same thing. Now, yes, if you're thinking, I'm gonna use up all of those pumpkins on the eight card you send to your cousins, I am, but there's a stamp set too, and it has a pumpkin in it too. I showed you that at the beginning, right? So we'll be able to make these forever and ever. And if you like to watercolor, stay to the end because I'm going to show you something that I hope blows your mind with watercoloring a pumpkin. Um, it's, it's not quick and easy. It, thanks, Lisa. It's not hard, but, you know, it's, it's not instant either. Now, this kit did not have Baker's Twine in it, and I felt like it needed Baker's Twine, so I'm using some of mine that came in other kits. Those just get thrown here on a plate on my desk because I always am using especially the linen thread. That's what they call It's called linen thread. I'm doubling up a piece and in this punch out there's a little holes right here so I'm throwing this in the holes hey Sandy um, so I can have this linen thread attached and I don't need any adhesives the holes are there, they just say, ribbon, ribbon, I need ribbon. And there you go. Okay, then you can, you have some open ends here, and if you want, you can open an end here, you don't have to. And then fluff up your little loops. And then we're gonna add this, and this can go high all the way up to there, or you can stay down to the floral or down to the tag, whichever you want to do. What did I do here? I stayed down to the tag on this one, so let's go up a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to use the dimensionals. It came with the minis, but I'm going to save those now because it's a brand new pack, and I'm going to keep them when my regular packs run out. These are regular size dimensionals, but I'm going to use those instead just because they're open. And I'm going to set this down. And we're going to go a little bit higher this time. Okay, this pumpkin is going to go right here. And I'm going to use one dimensional so it keeps its poof. I kind of want to hide that little V right there, so I'm going to go up there like that and push down. Okay, this one is going to go here, so I'm going to add the dimensionals underneath the stem, but I'm going to add, notice I said dimensionals, so I'm going to add two because I want it a little bit higher than everything else, especially the pumpkin that's right next to it. And the poofiness of those pumpkins, I just love this card. I just love it. So you can open it up and stamp whatever you want here. And then you can line the inside, which I'm going to do. Four by five and a quarter. Yep, I cut it down. And then this big stamp in the kit. Our Lost Lagoon ink. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. All right. Line everything up. Check our stamp. Stamp once. Pressing down even pressure. 
hold your paper and lift. Oh, beautiful. And then move it over just a little bit. We've got a little bit of ink left, so let's use it and get a very, very light shadow down in there. Barely see it, but a stamper will know. All right, so we can open up our card. Oh, that's the one I already did. And I have two of my cards made for my family. Yay! In fact, I have a cousin that's in the hospital right now. And I'm either going to go see her today or tomorrow. So she might get this card as a get well. Okay, this one or the next one or the next one. They're all so pretty. I'm going to have two of each, right? So then we just add the pretty envelope, stamping the flap, and we're ready to go. So look at this gorgeous kit already. Do you agree it's gorgeous? Do you like it? Can you give me a your thoughts? Okay, so let me put these away. Are you ready for the next one? Oh, thank you for the hugs and the hearts. Okay. Hi, Connie. All right. So I wanted to, I did this on Sunday. Good, Mary Jo. I'm so glad. I did this on Sunday. And so while it was fresh in your mind, I wanted to do it again. So you didn't forget about it. So what I'm going to do, this is the window, remember the monkey card with the window sheet and the separations there? Thank you, Karen. Very sweet. Okay, well, let's do the same thing, but let's do it with this set and see how gorgeous we can make this. Where, there they are. Like, where are my mini glue dots? So we took four mini glue dots on Sunday and we put them on the flaps. Now, do you remember what how I cut this? So it's a four and a quarter by 11, folded in half and scored at five and a half. And then we cut at one and three quarters and then again at two. If you don't remember that, ask me at the end. And I will show it to you again or go to the replay from Sunday and you will see the measurements for cutting this style card. Okay, so now what I wanted to um, suggest is having this on top of the window sheet. And where'd my other piece go? See what happens when I don't, when I don't lay things, when I don't put things down right away. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut another piece. I know the measurement. It's four and a quarter by one and three quarters. So let me do that. Okay, so this is going to go down on the window sheet as, whoop, not long enough. I didn't cut it long enough. Oh, dear. Four and a quarter by one and three quarters. Okay, and now this is going to go on the window sheet like this. So yes, we can put the four mini glue dots on the corners again. Strong little guys, aren't they? Then we're going to 
pay attention to where we want this. Oops, 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 don't stick yet. Okay, that's where I want that. Okay, so I'm gonna put a mini glue dot right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my card. And stick that down there we go and now I can have my card on my grid paper straight and put it on my card base isn't that pretty when you have an item over the window sheet okay so then I took um, white cardstock and cut it down one and three quarters by four and a quarter, same, same way I just did now, ran it through the folder, and then took my blending brushes and my ink off the paper and then right on the paper and the embossed image will grab the ink and if you don't have coordinating DSP or the right color of paper, you can make it any color you want, just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my liquid glue and put these two pieces down. Thanks. Okay, let's put this down. Magnificent, oh, so pretty. Okay. I don't know if that's in the way of, of you seeing everything. All right, so I did this pumpkin already. Did this pumpkin already, oh, I didn't, yeah, I did, okay. Did the back already and then here are some leaves so let's just place this however we want on the front of the card same manner as I just did a minute ago lifting them up just a little bit You know what? I don't want those up so high. I don't think I do. I don't want those up so high, I don't think. Only because I like the way this looks on the back, but I don't want a bunch of white sticking it. Because see how this is kind of a, almost looks like wood, a burnt wood. So it's very pretty from the back. Just my thing. I have a problem with that. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so then this one here. And then what do we do? Two. Just like we did the first time. Let me get this pumpkin. Now here it does have to stay off the edges so it doesn't, so it fits in the envelope. All right, I didn't, let's see. Tied a little bow here. We can decide where we want it. Let's see what it looks like there from the back. Let's see. It looked fine there. Okay, so I'm gonna roll up a mini glue dot. That's why another thing I love about these guys, you can make them as small as you want. Put it right behind the knot. This is a double bow as well. I'm sticking it on the cardstock mainly, on the very edge. Then I need my ribbon scissors, and we're gonna trim this just a little bit. So if you do not have linen thread, 
go back to your old paper pumpkins if you're a subscriber because there's some of them have it in it if you don't take them apart I take them apart and, and separate those things now we're going to take the inside and this is where I forgot to do something remember how I taught you duh um, you want to stamp the inside of your card before you put this together. So this will show you. I explained that on, on uh, Sunday, and then I didn't do it right now. So now I'm going to have to eyeball where I want to stamp because I didn't stamp first with the two pieces where they belong so I could see where this goes. So doing it like I told you on Sunday is going to make it easier on yourself. This is just going to be a thank you card. Now see if I'd have done it before I'd had it over a little bit more. So tweak. Easy fix. <laughs> So, let's get this down. All right, now the next, the next one is um, my watercolor. And I am totally, totally in love with it. Completely in love with it. All right, so let's go back and look what we've got so far. Yeah, well, yeah, I it's it's not that I didn't stamp it right. It's yeah, to re, to replace it, but I'd go struggle again. So next time when you're making this type of card, have these two down and do your inside first so you can place it without having to measure and stuff. That's just the easiest way. So see what we've got so far? So pretty. Okay. Now get ready for this one now I shouldn't I shouldn't pump you up so much because if I make a mistake you're gonna say well Beth that wasn't as great as you made it sound but let's hope I don't mess it up all right I'm not going to show you the card yet well actually the card is not even together yet it's laid out but I didn't glue it together because I wanted to show you this here is the pumpkin in the stamp set and this is a one and three quarters by one and three quarters yeah square of water color paper very important okay my friend Lara she's one of my customers she's new uh, with me she asked about the water painters the other day and on Sunday I showed you with the little monkeys how to watercolor these branches the very basic simple you know way to do it with the color the watercolor pencils but when my customers ask me for something I really try to think about you know, all the different, th I try to think, this is what I try to think. When I was new and I wanted to know everything, um, I appreciate when somebody could teach me. So we didn't have Facebook and all that stuff back then. I'm 28 years old in this business. And uh, back then we just, you know, we just had each other. So I had to learn from other people in person. Now what I just did was I took the pumpkin stamp set, inked it up in soft, Crumb cake, crumb cake hard stock, uh, ink, and stamped it on watercolor paper. That's the very, very basic part of this. Now I'm going to take a little bit of water, my aqua painter, my water painter. I'll get that name straight soon, one of these days. And flirty flamingo ink. It is a thing now. For pastel holidays you don't have to just do the traditional which I love the traditional I'm all about the browns and the oranges and the tweeds and the you know I'm all about that but this is very pretty too so we don't have a pink pumpkin in this kit we have an orange pumpkin but I want you to look at that orange pumpkin it has a, a dark green stem it has a lot of white 
kind of like the heirloom pumpkins, which I love. And then it has a white edge around it where they cut it out for us, right? Okay. I wanted pretty much that look, but I wanted it in pink. So I took Flirty Flamingo, and you're going to say, good grief, that's a bright pink. It is. But by the time we go on to crumb cake, and by the time we use water, um, it will lighten up quite a bit. So I'm just going to grab some of my Flirty Flamingo and um, a wet brush, and I'm going to go right over the soft suede soft suede. I keep saying that. Crumb cake. Crumb cake. It's crumb cake. And I'm just going to paint the pumpkin with a watered down flirty flamingo ink. I love the way this turned out the first time. They're always going to be a little different. But just keep playing with it and it's it's very i don't know it just makes my stress go away i sit out here with some light music and i breathe deep and i paint and it just takes me away from all the things that may be going on at that time and gives your body the time to distress and just relax. So the blending of this crumb cake, what I found for me, and this flirty flamingo gave me this somewhat pink pumpkin. Okay, in the, in the kit, there's the stem. Now, when I did this the first time, I didn't use this stamp, so I'm gonna be daring. Am I gonna be daring? Yeah, I'm gonna be daring. And, and But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same concept I just did with the pumpkin, and I'm gonna stamp the stem. Ooh, I almost was gonna stamp it upside down in crumb cake ink as well. Ooh, cute. I drew the first one. You'll see that in a minute. Because I didn't realize we had the stem and the stamp set at first. And then when I saw it, I'm like, duh. Okay. So now we're going to take Mossy Meadow. I love this green. We're not going to go to it yet. Because I'm going to take a little bit of more of the Flirty Flamingo. Now that this is dried a little bit. And I'm just going to go over it and make it a little darker in spots, so causing highlights. Wherever you like, wherever you think, there's water, so you can mush it around, you can change it up, you can lighten it, you can darken it. The problem with me is that I have very little patience, and so I want, I don't like to let things dry, I want them to just layer, 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 and without a lot of time, and it does take some time to let this sit to layer and soak in. Okay. Now I'm gonna to go to the pumpkin just while I'm letting that pink dry and I'm going to water it down really well because I don't know how it's gonna react. Remember I said I drew my first one? So I don't know how it's gonna to react to this crumb cake. So we're learning this together. Ooh, I like it so far. All right, that's very light. Clean off my brush again. All right, so let's look at these again. Giving that a minute to dry. And we're going to take our white reinker, and I put a little bit in my pad earlier when I was using it. I have a wet brush, and I'm grabbing my re white reinker because I was saying, how am I going to get white on this pumpkin? And how much white will I get? And I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Stamping and creating is all about experimenting. I hope that if you don't have these 
um, ideas that you enjoy coming here and letting me show you my experiments so you can just copy them. See how she's coming along? Oh gosh. Do you like it? I hope you like it. I'm gonna go back to the green and I'm gonna get it a little darker. See how it just runs by itself? Just a little bit at a time. And then let it set. It needs to dry. This is the hardest part for me because the definitions where I would using um, the stylus tool to separate. Well, here I'm going to use Early Espresso, I believe. Yep. And the lid as well. And I'm going to use the fine tip of my water painter. And I'm just going to do this and get my separations. This makes me relax so much you're gonna find me whispering. It's just so surreal and so, I don't know, peaceful. Okay. All right. Now, where else do I, th oh, I'm so glad, Mary Jo. Then I'm gonna grab some more, a little bit darker, and I'm gonna go right in. Okay, that might have been a bit much. It's quite not dry enough yet. See, this was where if you wait, it won't run that much. Oh, gotta wait, gotta wait. All right, so while we're waiting for that, I hope I don't forget to come back because I want some definition where the stem and the pumpkin meet. Oh, not crumb cake. Pebble path. Pebble path is a beautiful, beautiful color. And I'm going to wash it down a lot because I just want a shadow around the edge of my pumpkin. I don't want a dark color. I just want a shadow. And this color is so perfect for that. Now, I don't want to cut this out with, with scissors or anything like that. That's why I have the one and three quarters by one and three quarters square. And it's just a little bit bigger than my pumpkin. And so I don't need, see how close that is, except this is pink and that is um, an orange. All right, so we can go back and we can add more pink if we want more pink. It's just up to when you want to stop. And if you get it too dark, you just add more water and it will lighten up. All right, I so, so, so want to add some darker brown in here. There we go. Okay, and then I think I could play forever. And, and the more you play, the more it's gonna change up, the more you're probably gonna like it because you have all these layers of color that blend on their own because of the water and the watercolor paper. Look at this very vintage looking pumpkin. All right, so let's stop there. You guys have probably things to do and people to see, as I say. So let me stop there. I think you got the gist. All right, so what are we gonna do with that gal? Where's my packet? Where's my packet? There she is. All right, we're gonna take, so we were working with crumb cake um, cardstock, right? I mean, uh, crumb cake ink. So let's take crumb cake cardstock. 
And I have not put this card together. I just took a bunch of pieces from the kit. So let's see what it comes out like. Let's see if you like it. Okay, so oh, as I look down and I see the Pebble Path shadow around there, it just, I just love it. Nothing else I can say, I just love it. Gonna take my folder, layer piece, and add that on there. Hi, Angelina. Okay. Then I talked about the inked botanicals, 12, six by six. Has some very, very fall fun colors there. And I took a two inch wide piece. I don't remember what the length was. About four inches long. But then I stuck the bottom of this into the elegant tag punch and punched. And then I used my corner rounder for the top. I kept my retired corner rounder. I wish we had the current one, we don't, but I used this corner rounder for that. So let's, let's lay that there. And it's orangey and white. But I think, look, the pink just does something. Just does something. So this one's wet. I'm going to show you how I did it. Well, let's just try it. <clears throat> I don't like you to guess. So I'm just going to cut 16 inches of this uh, linen thread. That's the length of your grid paper. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a mini glue dot and put it on the end. And I'm going to stick it in the back here, just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to wrap it. You know, I'm going to leave this one square. This, my other one, I rounded the corners, but this not rounding the corners is letting the um, the uh, linen thread stay on better. I kept it kept slipping off the rounded corners, so that's why I was saying, "Well, let's just try it." Now I pull it off. Okay, so I kind of just want to separate them a little bit. When my fingers don't do the trick. I go to my take your pick tool because it always does the trick. All right, so I just liked that little bit of texture there. Yet another piece doubled. I mean, if you're gonna make a beautiful card, you might as well put your heart and soul into it, right? So I'm going to take the loop end and I'm going to stick it under here and tie a knot. I think our prayer came through, don't you? Do you guys like this? This is this. I just said, you know, help me come up with a really pretty watercolor look. And this is what we got. Okay. So here we go. Oh my goodness, stop. Now, remember I said I took one of these guys and I tore it apart. I don't think we need this anymore. Um, I'm gonna tear this. Okay, this is attached right there. So look and see where they're attached. Snip. This is what I call doing surgery. Snip. Mini glue dot. They are your friend. And tuck that right in there. Mm -mm -mm. I want a little piece. 
Let's see if this is small enough. So these guys will go a lot further if you if you do surgery, won't they? Does it look better on the outside or does it look better on the inside? We don't want to hide too much of that pumpkin. So you get back up there, mini glue dot, where are you? Okay. And another mini glue dot. I'm sorry, this is a long um, pop-up, isn't it? But I just wanted to share this beautiful kit with you. It's just stunning. All right, so there's this as well. So I'm going to put this because I know I'm going to, oh my, look, look. Can you see how it's drying, how gorgeous that is? Can you see how close we are to the original? It's a different color, yes, I know. But so, so when you're, my point was, right? What was my point? My point was when you run out of your pumpkins that are punch outs, you can just watercolor some. And just go back and watch this video and try and see how it works for you. Every time you try it, you will get better and better at it, I promise. Oh my gosh, now that it's starting to dry, I have to point this out in case you're not seeing it. These little spots here, they almost look like speckled, like gold. I don't I don't even know how to explain it. All right, so let's get this in there as well. Yeah, let's get that in there as well. Like I said, I hadn't built this card. I just cut out these pieces and um, watercolored the pumpkin, so building it in real time. So let's see here. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Now I'm trying to decide, do I want it centered, do I want it? I think I want it off so you can see more of this. And then honestly, 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 I have not ever used in the paper pumpkin kits so many. I use some of them, but I've never used so many of these tags before. That's going to go off. So there are smaller ones. Don't know. I want a tag on here. Let's see. What are we saying? Are you helping me? Let's see. No, I don't like it. I kind of like it like that. Okay, so... I'm going to go back to the color that comes in here in the kit. And we have with love and gratitude. Mm, so sweet. I'm staring at my pumpkin, you guys. I love it. I hope you try it. It's I showed you. It's so easy. Okay. With love and gratitude off a little bit there. And I'm gonna lay this on flat. So we have dimensionals underneath the tag. Oh, guys are back from lunch. Oh my gosh, we finished just in time. We're almost finished. So by the time they get in the house, 
and start their equipment, we'll, we'll be done. All right, first thing I want to know, do you have any questions? Second thing I want to know, did you enjoy your time here? Just one little heart if you did. And um, I want to show you the projects. With the envelope. Oh, good. Bag. Didn't I have one more? One, two, three. Yes. Where am I going to put this one? Look at this kit, you guys. Are you kidding me? I hope you got it. I hope you love it. All right. I don't see any questions. Try to watercolor. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.